Hello, and welcome to Timely Topics with Martha Teeter. Homelessness today is nationwide, and particularly in California, and it's increasing. In university towns like Davis, this is particularly uh, important because there's a unique pressure of town-gown relations on affordable and supportive housing. This particularly affects those living homeless. From the beginning of time, it's been important to find reliable shelter. In the beginning, this was a cave, later a grass hut, or a teepee, a stone, or a wood dwelling. But finding a reliable, safe shelter is a fundamental human need. Some, though, through no fault of their own, often from divorce or illness, from some event beyond their control, abuse or neglect, or losing one's job, some wind up experiencing homelessness. Without shelter, one never knows where one is going to be able to keep their possessions. And so those, sometimes they carry them around with them. Also, one never knows where it's safe to be day to day. And it's difficult to find a safe place to sleep. The cost of homeless can be insidious. Emergency services are used much more on a routine basis because it's very hard to predict uh, reliable times when you are living on the street. And human lives are wasted. It's been found that lives are shortened by 30 years on average because of having to be on the street. Research shows, however, that housing those that are most vulnerable can decrease the cost to a community of emergency services by 50%. And this also may discrete de Increase disruptions from those individuals that are housed in terms of the community. But nowhere is finding housing more difficult than in a place like Davis, where the housing vacancy rate is 0.2.3% down from 0.5% the previous year. And well over half of those experiencing homelessness in Davis are from Davis, either born here, or gone to school here, or having family here. So our two guests today are going to tell us about an exciting new collaborative project that's come out of listening to the community. These two represent nonprofits, Davis Opportunity Village, Maria Ogridziak represents that group, and that group tries to find housing, micro-housing, build micro-housing to rapidly uh, give housing to homeless individuals. And Davis Community Meals and Housing, represented by Bill Pride, which has been serving those living homeless since the 90s. This collaboration is to build Paul's Place at 1111 H Street to replace existing service center and to add supportive housing to serve Davis's homeless population. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to be here. Great. So um, to start out, maybe Bill, you could tell us a little bit about Davis Community Meals and housing um, initially and uh, how um, how it's running and where the pressures are. Okay. Well, we've been, we've owned the property at 1111 8th Street since 1994. We acquired it through the help of the city. And our intention was to operate what's called a shelter and also what's called a resource center there. 
And we've been operating that as a shelter transitional housing program since then, and also as a resource center Monday to Friday from 8 to noon. And frankly, the property was acquired by us with the help of the city. The buildings there were built, some of them, I think one of them was built back in the 30s, and the other one was probably just a little bit later than that. And we've done, we did some extensive work in the buildings when we first acquired them to kind of conjoin them and make it a functional place for us to do both those dual purposes. And as we've seen over the years, for the last almost 23 years we've been operating it, uh, the age of the buildings has become quite a problem for us. Yeah, I think we have a picture of that, um, of the building itself. And that's, that's the current facility. Um, we get, at our resource center alone, we probably get between 40 to about 65, 70 folks there a day. A day. And that's Monday to Friday. And then it operates as a sheltered transitional housing program for most of the time for 16 individuals, four women, 12 men. And for the last year for 10 men, uh, excuse me, four women and eight men. And, you know, so the house gets a tremendous amount of use from both of those uh, populations. Uh, over the years, you know, it's basically was meant as a residential, pro, a residential facility. And so it gets a lot of use from the folks going in there from using the bathrooms to taking showers. You know, we offer a whole range of services to individuals and families doing a lot of different things with us. You know, but the basic problems there is that it's a small facility, it's older. Uh, we did some extensive work about nine years ago to remodel the bathroom and everything else. But still, right now, for the resource center, right now, we have one bathroom, uh, a toilet, and a shower for wow. the 40 to 65 people who come there every day, wow. Monday to Friday. That's incredible. And most of those folks come. That's one of the main purposes of coming there is to take a shower. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a laundry facility that we let people use, and there's two washes, two dries for all the folks who use it, not only the resource center folks, but also the folks who live in the house, and even some folks from outside those populations who come in to kind of use the laundry facilities. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it, the building is clearly showing its age. It needs, needs some major renovations at this point. And certainly we need to have better showers and better uh, bathroom facilities for mm. folks who use our programs. Mm. Wow, great. Well, that sound like a, sounds like a uh, good facility, but one that's, I mean, a good mission, but one that's a facility that's need, in need of some updating. It, it needs a great amount of updating. Right, yes. right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so M Maria, tell us a little bit about Davis Opportunity Village. I guess it's also known as Dove. Yes, <laughs> yes. well, Dove consists of um, members of the Davis community who have uh, been interested in doing something about what we perceive as a, as a problem, uh, an increasing um, issue in our community. And many of the members are volunteers in some of the programs that already exist. And um, we came together realizing that we, as a group of community members, could try to do something to um, make Davis a, a provide a welcoming and nurturing place for people who find themselves homeless. And we began with the idea of trying to do um, uh, trying to build a, a village somewhere so that the homeless could find a place to come to. And we were unable to find land um, to build something like that in Davis. So mm -hmm. I'm an architect, yeah. and um, architects love to do, um, to do something meaningful. And, um, and the idea came that, that um, we were trying to create a sense of place for, uh, for, for this kind of project. And the land that became available and, and the, the, the connections began to be made and the idea um, came about that uh, maybe 1111 H Street could be the place to make um, better use of the land and to build something that would house the programs that Bill runs. Um, but do it better, um, be able to really give him an upgraded facility and provide a better daily um, uh, center uh, with more bathrooms, more showers, and, um, and the, um, the food and kitchen services that he provides. Mm -hmm. And in addition, because, um, uh, because it seemed like the right thing to do and something that we, we felt Davis urgently needed, we wanted to build something that would also provide other um, 
services for the people who find themselves homeless. Um, and so the idea came to propose a project and to, um, uh, and to see that it would be something that would be provided and built for by the Davis community. So um, we, uh, many people in the community came together to support the idea of not only providing the programs that um, already exist on the site, but to also add to that um, more transitional housing and permanent um, affordable housing units. So, yeah. um, wow. so exciting. this was very, very exciting. And the amazing thing for me was the, um, was the enthusiasm and support that came from not only our Dove community, um, from the people who already are involved in such things, but from people from all over the city and um, involved in many different ways in the community. So um, uh, we, uh, um, Davis has been a leader in, um, in looking at, uh, in being very community minded and involved in things and solving problems. And, uh, and this was yet another opportunity for us to do that. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, we want to hear a little uh, testimonial from Julie Jenkins, who we talked to earlier about the importance of having a home, what difference it makes. Well, I participated in um, New Pathways, okay. which brought a 20-year-old chronically homeless person out of the street into a home. It gave me hope that I could actually become a working part of society again. Mm -hmm. uh, I vote. And, but I'd like to pay my taxes and be a part of my community. Mm -hmm. And I feel I am a part of this community, even though I was homeless for 20 years. Wow. Okay, being homeless was very difficult, but when you have a roof over your head and people there showing you the way, that you can become a part of our, our world again. Mm -hmm. Reintegrating the homeless back into our workforce is a very important thing. Wow. Yeah. Because we get out there and all we can do is survive. <clears throat> and everybody's kicking you. Everybody, mm -hmm. and there's nobody giving you a shot at anything. I don't care how nice you look, how hard you try, the minute they find you're homeless, they fire you. Wow. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so being back at home gave me the hope and the courage to be able to re reintegrate back into the world. Bill Pride and Becky have done wonders, oh. and, and you know why? Because they treat us like adults, mm -hmm. and they trust us. That, and, that really makes sense. And we've difference. never betrayed any problem with that. Mm -hmm. And reintegrating us back into the workforce is important because everyone should pull their own weight. Yeah. Working is important. When I work, I feel like I'm accomplishing something, mm -hmm. like I have a life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Being homeless, I had no life that could only survive being right. an animal in the street, wow. being treated like an animal yeah. in the street. Wow. Okay, so it's yeah. really important what they're doing. Yeah. And it does work, it really does. Wow, that was uh, very from the heart. Yeah, about uh, surviving on the street versus having a roof over your head. It's really uh, an amazing, made an amazing transformation in her life. Yeah, I think you, you can see that. She did. She's been a great success story for us through our programs and through the community yeah. to go from being homeless for many years to being now housed for over a year. Wow. It's amazing, and with a job and the pride of reintegrating into the community and wanting to give back, to that really impressed me about her words. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, Maria, tell me about um, the key contributors to this project and, and give us a picture of exactly what it, what it looks like. Well, um, I guess Yolo County Housing also helped a little bit in uh, consultations the, about the The amazing the thing about this uh, process, well the design process, was um, the, uh, the generosity of all the people who um, have experience and knowledge about how such a facility might work. And in particular, Yolo County Housing Authority, um, represented by Lisa Baker, who has national experience in um, in different kinds of housing projects um, that are built in different communities was invaluable in making suggestions about um, how such a, a place might um, work and succeed in Davis. And um, 
architects don't often get to sort of develop a, develop the ideas for a project from from the very uh, from the grassroots and um, having Bill Pride's expertise and the facility that was there being able to provide input for that and Lisa Baker um, from Yolo County Housing to provide expertise on the other elements and um, also the um, chief of police um, providing expertise on how the facility might um, be better um, served by how the police might be able to interact better with it and what might work um, from their perspective and various other people in the community um, including some of the some of the people who were homeless and um, and week by week as the project as the designs were developed all this was input into the um, into the final design mm -hmm. so I feel that it was really um, a product of people who knew what Davis needed and um, and it was great to be able to put that together into one building um, and create a community from all these different parts um, Wow so so let's see this amazing building so this is the building that grew on the site of 1111 H Street. This is set right in the exact site with the vegetation and street and sky that's there now. And the building is set within the setbacks and heights limitations that are there currently in the zoning. And the project is designed to feel like a like a warm destination, a, a welcoming destination. With the top two floors accessed by the um, the stairs that go up the front of the building. Oh actually I think the next slide is kind of a little blow up. Okay. The the idea is that this would feel like lots of little homes. The slide is numbered, so maybe if we start with the number one, which is on the far left, the, the numbers are to help you understand how the building functions and how the um, how people um, know sort of where their where their part of the building is and so the people who go in it's kind of color coded which is a, which is a happy way to do this and the um, so along the left of the building is the access to transitional housing and um, that would take you to the second floor from um, from the left side there the transitional housing is designed like a house that has bedrooms and a common kitchen and family room. Then there are olive trees planted in the front, if you look at the number two, sort of symbolic of our region and um, of providing nourishment and symbolizing where we are in the Central Valley. And the front is designed as a welcoming garden with benches and a place to just come and stop, whereas many of the people right now who are homeless um, find themselves in places outside where they would like to stop and be, but it, they're not, they don't feel welcome. So this is a place where they know they can come. And then the main entrance there, or the, the central entrance, is a red H, which stands for home, it stands for H Street, mm -hmm. it stands for um, hope, it's also designed as goalposts, so you can feel as though you're, you can you can win here. The entrance takes you to the part of the facility that is um, that is echoing and reflective of what's there now. So it houses that first floor houses a resource center and a place where people can come for showers and uh, and daily help. Then the uh, the third and fourth floors are accessed by. Uh, the front stair and um, are the permanent affordable housing. And I think of it as um, it, they're micro dwellings and the access is like a hill town. It's, um, it's really like a community and like a, um, like a place with many parts, but everybody's coming together into one place. Um, anyway, that's, yeah. that's the facility. That's great, great. So there are roughly 300 square feet Complete the micro dwellings are 300 square feet each, and uh, 18, I think there are 18 yeah. of them, and uh, they're designed around a a very wide, a 16 foot wide. Um, I don't want to call it a hallway, but it's a sort of an access space. So there's space up there where 
if you wanted to think of the micro dwellings as be having um, a little community place between them. Community gathering. <laughs> yes. Um, there's enough room for that where people can come together and do things together and um, and it's also open at the at the end of this little mini street um, yes. to uh, to the outdoors and to a balcony. So um, it's much more than the spirit of it is much more than just the standard place with just a hallway and and places to go. Um, Great. It's a gathering place. That's great. And and Bill, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about the flow on the first floor. I think we have a plan of the first floor. Well, on the in the resource center, um, you know, our current facility allows us to have we have one bathroom, one shower for all those 40 to 60, 70 folks who come to visit us every day. We have limited space, we have limited office space for all of our staff, and the new floor plan will allow us to have more bathrooms. Uh, more shower facilities, uh, more laundry facilities for everybody, a better and bigger place for folks to get food and eat, and better offices for my staff to provide the services to the folks who come to visit us. I mean, the exterior has some seating areas, some places for folks to do gardens. Uh, there is also some parking for staff, which gets tucked underneath the building and off the street, and thereby frees up some space in the front for folks to gather at the tables and. Uh, other things are going to be out there, and other amenities we're going to have out there for the homeless folks who come to visit us. Uh, the second floor, the transitional housing, that, that's the, kind of the exciting part to me, which is that we're going to go from our current situation, which is f four people per bedroom, to each person having their own bedroom and their own little room in the transitional housing program. And I think that will lead to much better results and allow us to serve a more diverse population than we currently are able to do. Uh, and of course, the micro housing on the third and fourth floor is going to be a great addition. Yeah. Uh, we have experience providing permanent supportive housing already at Cesar Chavez Plaza, and this will be an, uh, allow us to expand and provide more housing to more folks. Right. And I think I just want to mention there was one other person that didn't get mentioned by Maria mm -hmm. as part of, part of is a business person in town, Reed Humans, mm -hmm. who yes. was instrumental in kind of getting some of the conversation going about remodeling our current facility at 11 Lemonade mm -hmm. Street. Yes, great, great. And he's talking with the business community about support. About as support I understand. and yeah. fundraising and Excellent. coming up with the dollars and everything else from the community mm -hmm. to actually build a facility. Mm -hmm. So, what this is going to do for the community then is give them a, a better resource center for homeless, really able to serve, as you said, more diverse population and add housing for 18 people that are now on the street mm -hmm. and yes. that's that's really and I, I think the exciting thing about that is housing is certainly our biggest barrier right now from getting folks yes. who are homeless to being housed again yes because the vacancy rate in Davis is shockingly low and the amount of affordable housing out there is so low it's almost impossible to find housing for folks who are able to move off the streets right mm -hmm. right and I understand that for funding this it's going to be funded entirely by private um, donations. I think that's the goal. And yeah. um, and this, this would make it a truly a Davis community project. It's, yes. It's, I uh -huh. think it would, um, the idea is to uh, make it really be something that we do um, together. And that is something that Davis, uh, actually, as I talk about this project um, to other, other people in California, um, I think all the cities would love to do something like this. I, yeah. I think I think this can really be wonderful for Davis and show show the world what we're about. We really right, do care. Right, that's fantastic. Yeah. So we've got um, individuals, businessmen. I think local churches mm -hmm. have interests, nonprofits, mm -hmm. um, and health care providers also. I think are mm -hmm. very interested in contributing to this. And we want to invite everyone in the listening audience to learn more about it. Uh, there is a website, paulsplacedavis.org, where you can learn more about the project, be kept up to date on things. I, I think you'll be hearing a lot more about this in the coming months. Um, and there'll be opportunities to donate directly there. Yeah, well, I want to thank you so much. This is really a very exciting project. I'm delighted to 
have you tell us about it and um, to give the opportunity to those listening to uh, participate in it because I think this is, I mean, I sense a, a chance for Davis to, in another way, be a, a world-class type uh, ad, advanti, advantage, um, advancing a cause in a unique way, uh, advancing um, with a leaps and bounds, I think, a community, community center to serve homeless. So this, uh, this is an incredible opportunity, and um, we think that, uh, I'm sure we'll be hearing more of this, as I said uh, before, uh, and um, I want you uh, to know I appreciate your interest in this project, and um, there will be more information on this, even from Davis Media Access in the coming months. And I want to thank my guests very much for coming here to tell us about it. And I want to thank you for listening. Great.